Welcome back, Washed Up Walk-Ons fans. It's episode 146 of the podcast, and we've got a lot to talk about on this fine Sunday afternoon. First of all, Drake, welcome back to the pod. Thanks, boys. Uh, Happy to be back with you guys. So there's been, I mean, there's been, you know, Drake is a polarizing figure. and uh, What did I do this time? No, just from a couple weeks ago, the little, the little you know, Twitter debacle that you had, and then all of a sudden you deleted your Twitter, and it was for you guys. I, I know, you guys. I, I know, and and uh, the the response that we got was multiple people saying that they were happy that we were gone, multiple people saying that they would stop listening if you didn't come back. It was, I mean, it was all over the board. Um, so I, we, we appreciate uh, that you care about us as yeah. fans. Uh, Drake just took a quick little breather. Uh, for, for a while, he wasn't going to come back, for, and then he, now he's back. Um, one thing that definitely helps is uh, the Big Ten is back. So uh, that, that brings a little bit of normalcy. I, I think that probably helps, helps Drake's mental state a little bit now that Hawkeye football – has returned and we're going to get into that as well. Um, but Drake is back. We're all back. It's a Sunday afternoon. It's the halftime break of the early games it's about two o'clock and uh, every player in the NFL is currently trying to end their season. Uh, it, with- I, I was wondering what was going to happen with the shortened um preseason no preseason games the guys don't have all their time to get ready and it's clearly showing that their bodies need all of that preparation time because these guys are going down with lower leg injuries like it's nobody's business it's not good kevin have you gotten a chance to kevin joining us from the car as he often does on his way back from i assume chicago kevin have you got a chance to check in on the happenings of today yet yeah, so uh, my number one, uh, my first round draft pick, Saquon Barkley, went down with a nice little knee injury in the first quarter. So my fantasy year is, as the kids would say, is fucked. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, is that where you work, Kev, Chicago? Uh, yeah, I was in Chicago this weekend. My uh, my baby nephew is getting baptized, so got to go uh, cleanse him of the devil this weekend. Oh, good. Perfect. So he has way less of me uh, than God in him now. Yeah, I, I'd hope he didn't have any of you in him to begin with, uh, but yeah. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Um, so we're back. The, the boys are back. We're talking football. There's a lot that's going on. First of all, to get it out of the way, we, as you may have noticed, for those that listened to 145 on Thursday or since Thursday's episode came out, uh, you heard the new kind of um, ad read. You'll also hear those in this episode as well. The Washed Up Walk-Ons have officially signed with a podcast network. We are now a Blue Wire podcast. We secured the bag. Claps all around. Hey, uh, hey, give, have a, give yourself a hand. Give yourself a hand. Uh, what what did we... What was the, what did we sign for again? Was it two or three million? I can't for I can't remember. You were just under Rogan, I think. Yeah. For uh, our our comp deal. Yeah. So there you go. We're that, uh, that's not you walk on army. We appreciate that. Yeah, we really do. That's uh, the only reason I came back. I had to get the paycheck. It's because we yeah because we signed the the massive deal. No, we we have been approached before by several networks that. Uh, you know, they basically congregate podcasts together into one place based on, um, you know, it's, it's usually been sports networks. Blue Wire is a startup podcast media company out of San Francisco. Um, they have a ton of big names that have signed with them, most notably Greg Olson, uh, tight end in the NFL, who has a, uh, a tight end. His, his podcast is called TE1. Um, and he's got episodes with tight ends all over the NFL, including our very own George Kittle. Um, they also have big time guys like Taj Boyd, um, 
Megan Rapino, I believe, has a podcast on their network. They have uh, some pretty decent names in sports that have signed with them. Uh, and nothing changes for you guys. You guys are going to hear some different ads each week. Um, on the back end, it basically helps us grow a little bit, gives us a little bit more exposure. We bring a fan base and um, you know some numbers to their network, and we, we kind of help each other grow. But we still own everything. The wash of walk-ons is still the same. We can still say whatever the fuck we want to say. And, um, yeah, it's, pre it's a pretty good deal for us. Uh, it, it, and we're not making $2 million. But, uh, you know, maybe... No, wait, we're not? Uh, no, maybe on our second contract or, you know, our third contract okay. if, if we get there. Um, we're making, like, league minimum right now. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Um, but that's exciting and uh, good for us. The Big Ten announced last week, and we weren't able to we weren't able to talk about this because I actually recorded the episode with Kyle uh, for Thursday on last Monday. Um, the Big Ten announced Wednesday that everything has been taken back. They're now going to try and play a season. Big Ten football has returned. Isn't that hysterical though? Like after everything. They shut it down. They're like, this is an absolute state of emergency. These kids absolutely cannot play. And then everybody else does it, and it's just fine. And then the Big Ten's like, oh, wait, man, we screwed up. We done, we, we done messed up, yeah. Well, not only that, but the Big Ten goes, okay, we're going to try and play. And then immediately you start hearing reports of the MAC trying to, to, to f figure it out and the Pac-12 trying to figure it out. And it's like – I saw a really good, great tweet that who knows if this is really the motivation, but it, it seemed like it fit the bill. It was like, oh, it kind of seems like the Big Ten and Pac-12 tried to be trendsetters and misread the room. Um, <laughs> and I can't, I, I can't say that that's too, too wrong. Like they kind of made their decision early. The other conferences waited it out created a plan and said, okay, we're going to go along with it and see if it works. And then they started to make it work. And the big 10 was like, Oh shit. Like we, we messed up. We, we got to figure it out now. Um, all of that aside. Yeah, kind of. I mean, like the PAC 12 was always going to cancel the season. They just did it in like the most, I, I, I don't know, but like the most cowardice way ever. They were literally just waiting for the big 10 to cancel their season and announce their cancellation like 12 hours later or whatever yeah. it was. Yeah. I, it, regardless, it means that Iowa football is back boys. I mean, how exciting is that? And that's all we really, that's all we really need, man. That's all we need. Iowa football has returned and it's not going to look. We have a schedule out and everything. Like, we've oh got a, God. we've got a schedule. We're going to freaking talk about it. Uh, so Wednesday football is announced that it's back. All of the sudden, yesterday, as I am finishing up 17 miles of marathon training, I come back into the house, and I get on Twitter, and there's a freaking schedule out. We're playing eight games. Every team gets to play a postseason game. There's going to be – it's basically like um, at the end of the season, you're going to take the one seed of the West and the one seed of the East. They're playing for the Big Ten Championship. And then the twos play each other, the threes play each other, all the way down the line – till Illinois is playing. honestly I, I love that I, yeah <laughs> <laughs> and you know there's gonna be a 13th place game and it's gonna be freaking lit man it's gonna be awesome I mean honestly that should be the prime time game we'll play we'll play the, the big 10 championship the afternoon of that Saturday I want the seven versus seven seed on each side to be the prime time seven o'clock matchup yeah I think that'd be awesome Illinois. And if we're not throwing down <laughs> stacks and stacks and stacks on that money on that money line or that spread, I don't oh, know what yeah. we're doing. Oh yeah, Illinois versus Rutgers, over under set at thirty four, and, <laughs> and it's just <laughs> the best. It's like seven p.m. prime time, and it's lit. Uh, Honestly, like, dude, I'm I'm not lying to, to you when I say I'm excited for that because we're actually gonna get to see. Who is the worst team in the Big Ten? It, it is cool. You're going to have, a, for you know, maybe for the first time, an actual one through 
14 ranking at the end of the year. Like that kind of has some legitimacy. Right. Uh, it's going to be a yeah. little lopsided, probably. You know, I can't. I can't wait till. Oh my God! Can you guys imagine if it was Nebraska? Oh. Did you see? How did, happy would that make everyone? Did you guys see that all the I'm, people from Nebraska complaining about their crossover games? Did you <laughs> tell them to eat our nuts? Dude, these <laughs> these guys are trying to tell everybody that they're the the absolute blue blood of the Big Ten, and everybody needs to respect them. And then they're complaining about who they play with in their own conference and get a grip. Uh, you know, it's. I think the Big Ten just gave Nebraska a big fuck you for causing a causing a stir this <laughs> past month or so. Well, Say, okay, yeah, you can start off with Ohio State. All right, welcome back to football. Right. So I I think what actually happened was, and I this isn't exactly it but it was something like each team had a a guaranteed crossover like a non-negotiable crossover for this year set up so every team kept that crossover game so it just so happened that nebraska had either ohio state or penn state those are their two crossovers and then the other crossover game for everybody was like the first home crossover game that they that was next on the schedule and so it just so happened that that that's who Nebraska pulled like and if Nebraska th- really thinks I, I I don't know what they want they're not going to win the west like Iowa I, it's going to be the Hawks or Wisconsin most likely Minnesota has you know some dudes especially since um they're you big think time say, uh, Bateman's, Bateman's trying to come back now yeah he's he's trying to come back so if, if he gets granted that access the Gophers will be um not any not an easy win it's going to be one of those three teams and Nebraska needs to maybe worry about just like solidifying a solid 500 consistent winning percentage first. And yeah, uh, it's start off by beating Northwestern at the start. Yeah. And so, you know, all the antics on Twitter, you got to love it. Iowa schedule eight games starting with, the Purdue Boilermakers, and guess what? What a treat. October 24th, Kirk Ferentz, Captain Kirk, and the boys get to travel to glorious Ross Aid Stadium in West Lafayette, Indiana. I I feel bad for him. I really do. I mean, Can we talk about it's gonna how be cold? A normal, it's, it's going to be a normal trip to, to West Lafayette. Yeah, there's going to be like no fans in the stadium. So. Right, yeah. Can say, we Greg? talk about how cold it's going to be for the entirety of the season? Like, we know how cold it can get at the end of October, and that's when week one is. Yeah, you, you kind of hope that – I feel like usually through four games, you're good. Like, the first four, you're good. When you get into, like, the middle of that season, like five, six, seven, eight, those are, like, the four games, the middle third of the season where, as a player – and, and probably as a fan, you hope, you're like, every Saturday I hope that we can catch some nice sunny weather. And if you can hold out, like, you can get games through. Like, I remember in 2015 when we beat uh, when we beat Minnesota game 10, at night it was still, like, 50 degrees. Like, it was pretty nice that night. Um, Kevin was – I always, the, always, always thought the middle, the middle third of the season was nice, but – it, you but know, they, I'm, 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 I'm born for the cold, man. Right. So, like, I hate, I hurt, hate the early season games when it's hot. Oh, like, I'm God. dying. Then you get into 9, 10, 11, 12, and that's when you're like, okay, if we can get, if we can get 40 degrees, like, that's a win. And, um, yeah, but we're, we're playing what? The first two weeks of December, the last, uh, last two games, right? We're playing, yeah, Saturday, December I think, 5th. I think We'll the twelfth is the the crossover games. So, well, no. So the nineteenth is the is the crossover. Oh really? Oh. Yeah. So so here so here's Ooh. what we got. Ooh. October twenty fourth. <laughs> October and we're gonna break we're gonna break this down. October twenty fourth, the Hawks travel to Purdue, and open up with with uh, the Boilermakers and. That's a nice. Let's w. just hope Rondell Moore doesn't play because like, that's we an need, easy dub. Yeah, we need him to not opt back in because then we can call that. Well, like a, yeah. I don't think. I mean, it. Those guys who opted out like already signed agents and everything. I don't think there's any way the NCAA lets them back in in the next three or four weeks. It would be very interesting. Um, but you know, 
you, we usually start off with a with a UNI, uh, Northern Illinois, uh, s someone who, you know, may not be the heaviest hitter, and so the season starts off pretty familiar with with Purdue, who granted has beat the Hawks, including our senior year, uh, a couple times in the last five years, but it's better Purdue than Ohio State, um, and we start off with Purdue away. Which, if the Hawks do, you know, if the Hawks play like they should, it should be a win. Um, we then come back to Iowa City for two weeks. Uh, we will play Northwestern in Kinnick on Halloween. Not Halloween. Trick or treat Iowa City. Would love to have a, a pick six that day. Uh, and then the following week, we, week three is November 7th. Uh, so funny. And Michigan State will come to town. And as we know, Michigan State has not been really Michigan, that. I, I think Michigan State's going to be an awful program this year. I, New coaching just, staff, yeah. with limited practice time. I'm not looking for a, a lot. I'm, I'm going to set Michigan State's win total at like three. I was going to say three. Um, so three games to open up the year that if the Hawks do what they should, we, we could be looking at three and oh. And then we play probably the toughest back-to-back -back, um, that we'll play all year uh, where we travel to Minnesota on November 14th and then to uh, Happy Valley um, on November 21st. So we, we play at Minnesota, at Penn State um, in consecutive weeks, and those will be two tough games. Um, Is the Penn State linebacker trying to come back? I Not don't know. I don't I'm, know. I'm drawing a blank on his name right now, but he Micah. Is, uh, it's Micah Parsons. Yeah. Yeah. As 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 Coach Wallace would say, oh, this guy's a dude. Yeah, that, that guy's a dude now, right? Uh, he's Are we all the way sold on Minnesota actually being a good team? I, I you know I don't call them. I I don't know because I, I truly haven't because all this has been up in the air. I haven't really looked into who has what returning. Um. With with without that receiver at Minnesota, I don't think they have like just a star-studded offense. Um, but you know they're in year four or five now of PJ Fleck, and you know they have an identity. You know they proved last year that they could go and win ten games. Granted, they just absolutely skated by in the first four and. Uh, couldn't beat the Hawks, though. Couldn't get the Hawks, which, you know, Hawks by a million. Told you to hammer the Hawks last year. All three of us told you to hammer the Hawks last year against Minnesota. And if you did, I mean, well, technically we were favored. But um, you just don't come into Kinnick and win late in the season versus the Hawks, which is why, as you know, if we can get through Minnesota and Penn State. And I saw a lot of people looked at the schedule and said, eight no. And it's just, a, it's just a, such a horrible mindset to put yourself in as a fan. Like, it's so hard to go undefeated. I, I just wish fans understood that. Um, if we could get well, – I mean, it's, 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 it's the same thing as always here. There's not a game on the schedule that we cannot win. Right. I did a podcast with, uh, with some guy yesterday who wanted me to come on and, and talk Hawkeyes a little bit. And uh, he, he asked me how I thought we were going to do this year. And I told him that's a really tough question because it, you, you can't just look at games on an individual game by game basis and just say, oh yeah, on paper they should win or on paper they should lose. It, everything kind of molds together in one week. Fluky flows. shit happens in football. Like some guys get hurt. We just saw Saquon blow out his knee, like Kevin said, and his season's over with. And like that happens in football. The guys are going to have a weird season. They've had a weird training regimen, et cetera. Like, that stuff yeah. happens, so that's if, super unpredictable. If COVID breaks out in your team, you got like a quarter of your team quarantined for three to weeks straight, and you know, the, I mean, what type of team you putting out in the field those those couple of weeks? So it's gonna be a, it's gonna be a fluky season for sure. I I told yeah, and you guys just hit it right on the head. I said, you know, when you look at a, a twelve game schedule to actually put together. 12, which is why the 2015 season was just so improbable. You don't, you can't just look at, okay, at, you know, at 3.30 in the afternoon, I was going to take on Purdue to open up the season. 
And it's just, it, it's like, okay, are our, are our guys better than their guys? It's, it's not how it works. You have to take into consideration that week of preparation. What is going on in all 120 players' lives that week in football, in life, in school, that is causing stress for them to be able to put in the effort they need to be, to be on the, to be on top of their game every day. They go to, we come back home to Northwestern the next week. Who's hurt from the Purdue game? Who's still a little behind on some, you know, physical therapy treatment? Who's got a good grip of Northwestern? Who's moved on? What, you know, it's, it's, it's this crazy week to week formula that, that has to matriculate through the season and it's it's so hard and you can't just look at games as, as a single event they everything matters and so if we drop one at minnesota or we drop one at penn state but we can come out of that first five game stretch at four and one i love where we're sitting still the um, most important thing I is think that we'll, we beat I think Wisconsin. we'll be favored yeah i think we'll be favored the first three games yeah for sure then we're at we're are we at Minnesota, we're at, right? Then, then we're at Minnesota. I think that'll be a rough, 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 roughly a pick in that game. will be dogs against Penn State. Yep, a hundred percent. Depending on how the first three games go for Minnesota and the Hawkeyes, I could even see Iowa being a slight favorite um, at TCF Bank Stadium. Um, yeah, but it, it'll be Good. it'll be interesting. I also told the guy this in this year where the season and what has been known and unknown up until this point is so nuts. And you're right, Kevin, you know, a team gets COVID half the players are done. You're playing, you know, you're starting out of 22 guys. You're starting like 17 freshmen and sophomores because all your seniors have COVID or something nuts like that. Like it's going to be who handles their shit off the field. The best that probably ends up doing the best on the field. Like it's, it's going to correlate heavily. Like, who is on top of their shit, and you just don't know what. Right. So as long as we don't, as long as we don't get very too excited about beating Northwestern on Halloween, and we don't go cracking bottles at Summit afterwards, then right. you know we'll probably be okay. But if we you want to what? reward ourselves for beating Northwestern, then you know we we might be in trouble next week because of COVID. But Kevin, Kevin, listen, what is the only thing that's better than beating Northwestern? Bottles at Summit. Yeah, bottles of summer afterwards, dude. <laughs> no, you know what's going to have to happen? Is us three are going to have to be in Iowa City that night. And we're going to have to go – we're going to go have to bodyguard uh, Bouncer Summit. And any guy who walks in, we're just going to have to tell him, no, dude, go home. Go home. You've got Michigan State next week, Golden Gophers in two weeks, the Penn State game in three weeks. you got more shit. I understand. There's girls and there's bottles inside. But tonight, you can't – Give a shit about any of that. Go home. And then after everyone goes home, then we'll go inside. <laughs> yeah, then, then we we'll just go. turn around and go drink their booze. <laughs> yeah, we'll do <laughs> Hey, we played here in 17. I don't know if you guys remember, but we beat Ohio State. So uh, we, we were told then it was free bottles for life. Uh, so can you set that up? Um, but – even if we go four and one, uh, you know, depending on, and I can bring up Wisconsin's schedule too. It, kind of the idea is here, the, the the Saturday December twelfth game, which is usually when the Big Ten Championship is being played. Actually, it might even be December fifth, some some years closer. Um, the Wisconsin game at the end of this, the year, game number eight, uh, it, is going to be potentially the decider for who goes to the Big Ten Championship. Um, and I'll to, tell you what, man, we haven't put the balls on the bowl in a long time. No, not to skip over. Um, after we go uh, to Penn State uh, for game five, we come back home for a two. Well, actually, we come back home for the, the Cornhuskers. Nebraska comes to Kinnick on November 28th. Uh, I think and then, that's uh, Thanksgiving weekend. Yep. Yep. So we have Thanksgiving one more week or one could, more year. Could potentially be shifted to a Friday game, I hear. Um, yeah to kind of continue a tradition. And then game seven, um, we go to Champaign, Illinois to play Illinois. Um, so so going to be favored in both those games. Yeah, and, and hopefully another couple wins. So if the Hawks can take care of business and, and even, you know, they slip up one, one game, you're looking at six and one going, uh, going into Kinnick Stadium, 
home game versus Wisconsin Badgers. Make it a make it a prime time game. Give me the Wisconsin Badgers and the Iowa City or Iowa Hawkeyes for the West on December twelfth to go play probably Ohio State. I want nothing more than that to happen. Nothing more. I mean that would that that would be the best birthday present I could ever get. I think if the Hawkeyes were to beat Wisconsin for a chance to go to Indianapolis. Twelve twelve. 12-12, man. Two Birthday's six, good. Two six. Birthday's good, Drake, right? Uh, not really, but <laughs> um, yeah, Kevin, I hope it, your birthday turns out to be the best birthday ever because I don't really care about your day necessarily, but I certainly care about mine on that day, and the Hawks winning would certainly better mine. So let's, uh, let's have a great birthday. Yeah, so again, Purdue, Northwestern, Michigan State, Minnesota, Penn State, Nebraska. Illinois, Wisconsin. I, it's really, it's it's really, uh, you know, we avoid Ohio State, which I, which you you never want to say like, oh, I'm glad we didn't play them. Like, if you're gonna be the champion of your division, if you're gonna be the champion of a conference, you should never have that mindset of, uh, oh, we want to avoid them. But there is a little bit of gaming back and forth where if we can have the chance to go prove ourselves against Ohio State all the better that we don't have to play them in the middle of the season. Um, you know, and, and, you know, it's a potential loss if it's in the regular season and that affects who goes to the big 10 championship. Um, obviously from a fan's perspective, everybody looks at this, everybody looks at this and goes, Oh, Penn state, and Wisconsin. Those are, those are the only two games that we have to go and win as players. We know, you know, we lost, we lost to Purdue. We lost to Northwestern. We lost to Michigan state. We lost to Minnesota. We lost to all of these teams during our five years. We know just how easy and how fragile a Division One football game can be. It isn't just easy to go in and win at Purdue. Like, it just isn't. Um, it isn't. Those guys are on scholarship, too. That coaching staff's being paid millions of dollars, too. And that coaching staff has really turned that program around since they got there. It's a, Purdue's a good program. Like, I res- one's not a joke. Yeah, I, I respect I re- the hell out of them. Yeah, and, and, you know, back to what you said, Kevin, earlier, uh, I, I told the guy in the podcast, it was like, you know, there's some years where if you're to figure out, you know, you somehow plug in all the numbers and the, the records and the schedule and the home away and whatever, and you come up with this win percentage number for the Hawkeyes in each game, you know, you look at this year's schedule, and I think back to games that we played, like, two of the games we, we ended up winning, those the Michigan game in 16, the Ohio State game in 17, you give you give us a win percentage chance before those games. Uh, like on paper before the game? We're looking it's at single, single digits. digits. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Uh, I mean we, Walmart guy, he told us. <laughs> he told us. Hawks are going to need a prayer this weekend, we, huh? We we're going to need a fucking prayer, all right? Um you're looking at maybe 10% for the Hawks in those games. We pulled them out. I look at this, this, this schedule and, you know, obviously win percentage will change each week based on how a team is doing, how a team looks uh, at, at the beginning of the year here. I don't see a win percentage less than 40% uh, against, you know, when you're, when you're looking at, at Minnesota or at Penn state or home versus Wisconsin, you're basically looking at a 50, 50 pick them every time or better. Uh I, I just I just feel really good about the schedule. I know that all of Hawkeye Nation is excited because we are potentially, especially if Petrus um, c- can figure it out and kind of get a grip and just just be good enough. Um, we're looking at potentially the most offensive firepower we've had since Stanzi and McNutt and DJK. Um, it's yeah, just, so here's the thing I just thought about, though, is, you know, the fact that we're playing later in the year is actually probably going to hurt us on the outside with our weapons because it's just going to be harder throwing the ball. Yeah. We're, we're going to have to rely on the run game, and the run game hasn't been great the last couple of years. No. Um, but – So, I mean, the te- so like, this, this year is probably custom-built for, like, the teams that just ground and pound because, you know, it's going to get into late November, the first two weeks of December. It's going to be 
probably that Wisconsin game is going to be 20 degrees outside. Yeah. Probably yeah. a little windy. Maybe some snow on the ground. Gonna hurt I don't know how, how much you're going to be throwing. Oh, it's going to hurt like hell. It's going to hurt know, so uh, bad. Yeah. So it's, it's going to be all right. Who can nut up and just take the pain? I don't know how, how much uh, throwing around and razzle-dazzle is going to be happening in the Big 12 or Big 10 in the late <clears throat> and early December, you know? Here's the deal. What if we – okay. We got a Lark Jackson. Assuming he doesn't opt out um, and, and a Lark plays, we have a Lark. We have Linderbaum, who are both – so so 40% of our offensive line are guaranteed NFL starters, like, at some point. We also have, uh, I believe, that Koi Kronk, who transferred from – or is it – was that his name, or is that, like, some – we have another offensive lineman. I'm pretty You've sure. got the right guy. He's from Indiana. Oh, the yeah, senior yeah. transfer from Indiana. Yeah. Koi Kronk, yeah. experienced kid from Indiana. So, you know, he's probably pretty solid. And then, we, you know, we'll find a way to plug and play two more spots. You've got – Probably Banward at one. Yeah, and then you've got – I mean, you've got Goodson coming back, another year on the backs. Um, and when you have those receivers – What is going on? When you have those receivers, you know, the defense has to be a little bit more cautious on just stacking the box and coming downhill. I think for sure. I think it could be a but, breakout uh, year for the running game. Well, yeah, I'm just saying that, you know, won't come late November, early early December, it, 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 the weather conditions will not be favorable to passing, which I think hurts us this year. For like the first year in like forever. Here's the deal. We throw Tyler Goodson at Wildcat. And that's the answer. Honestly, I love it. I would I would absolutely watch that. If we in college, the Wildcat can, can work out. Mikai, yeah. yeah, put Makai. Yeah, I, I would watch Tyler Tyler Goodson and Mikai just duo gunning it back there. Absolutely. And and, and then put Amir Smith Marset back there too. Run it run a triple back like the uh, Heisman package at, with the Ravens. Where they put Mark Ingram, uh, who else do they have? Mark Ingram, Lamar, and RG three in RG three, and you just put those three back there, and you run double, triple option with the passing option as well to Brandon Smith or Nico, and we we just changed the game this year. I mean, how insane would that be? Um, okay, you've got me sold. Bring it to Brian. Bring it to Brian Ferentz. He's gonna like shove you out of his office. Yeah, I mean. Also, I it would kind of suck because I do want to see Spencer do really well. I, I and I think he I, I really do think he's going to be good. Um, I'm excited to watch. So that's it. I mean, that's you know Iowa football is back. We've got the schedule. It's on. It's it's on the platter. Uh, you know, it's kind of. I feel like at this point, it's kind of like okay, we finally got it. Hold your breath and do everything you can to make sure it happens because. It's it's hard to tell how actual actually fragile the season could be. Yeah, um, don't let's not fuck it up. Any young ladies that attend the University of Iowa out there listening, stay the fuck away from the players, okay? Yeah, we we know, know that's a difficult task for most of the female uh, attendees of the University of Iowa. A lot of them uh, are little birdies for the bottles, but you know, yeah. gotta stay away. Uh, they flock. They they there's some. It's just an added distraction, okay? You're just noise. All you are is noise. And we don't need no more noise, all right? So that's... that's Plenty noisy out there already. Yeah. So the Iowa Hawkeyes, uh, basically lock it in right now, December 19th, Big Ten Championship, uh, probably playing Ohio State, and Hawks by a million, honestly. Champions, take us to the playoff, 9-0. and um, Would be insane. Uh... Anything else going on today before we kind of we move on? We're right in the middle of the NFL. Now that we started the podcast, we've been up here for a half hour. I don't know uh, what is going on. Hopefully, uh, I, I will tell you this. I had the Niners minus seven, which looked good at halftime, uh, despite some injuries. I had the Bills minus six, which was holding uh, steady. And uh, I picked the Seahawks to be the Patriots. Those are my three bets of the day. Uh, we'll see how those turn out. I know Drake had a couple of those same ones as well. Yep, and then I've got the Ravens and the Chiefs both covering until they prove to me that they can't. And uh, actually, ever since that 
uh, last UFC pay-per-view, Cormier Stipe, when I was 0 for 4, that debacle. Uh, ever since then, I've been doing pretty well on the old sports betting boys. Kevin, did you have any bets today? Uh, I didn't actually have a chance to make it down to Riverside to burn it down, but I had a guy tweet me, so I just gave him three of the games I liked. I had the Bills minus five and a half versus Miami. I had uh, uh, the Chiefs with Drake minus eight and a half at the Chargers. And then the third one, not looking too hot right now, I had the Panthers plus eight and a half get whooped by Tampa Ooh. last time I saw yeah, Tampa Bay uh, and Mike Evans came to play today a little bit. Worf's, dude, also, let's talk about how solid Worf's looks. Dude, he has been so good in the first two weeks. It's out of control. He's insane. I mean, he just stepped. He's he, So, him and James Daniels both, like, so young and so powerful and so athletic, they step right into the league and just – it's just oh. an issue, dude. Uh, hold, hold up. Morty's winners might might be alive right now. Panthers are only down twenty one to seven, but we're on the Tampa Bay fourteen right now. Oh, so they're trying to make a little comeback here, huh? We're trying to cover, baby. We don't need to win. We just need to cover eight and a half points. Wow, that would be incredible. Um, Boys, the uh, the Falcons were up twenty eight to three at halftime, and Julio and Todd Gurley had a combined four points. So yeah. I don't know where the Falcons are getting all their production, but I guess it's just a fade <laughs> Gurley and Julio year because yeah. I'm just disgusted. Calvin Ridley uh, is the answer to that. The 2020 season and year continues to just be absurd. Uh, things are happening that shouldn't happen. Hopefully you guys had a fantastic Sunday and are set up on this Monday for a great week. Uh, that's about all we got. We're Kevin's on his way back to Iowa City. He's probably going to nestle in and watch some football. I know I'm going right back down to the couch after we finish recording this. Um, we're, uh, you know, we, we secured that bag. We're a Blue Wire podcast. The Hawks are back. Football is back. Things are kind of normal. And um, I'm happy, man. I'm in a good spot. Hawks by a million, bitches. That's it. Kirk's dog's out, baby. That's it. Hawks by a million. Watch the Falcons. Episode 146. That's it. We'll talk to you Thursday. Peace.